Let's go all the way back to 1975 and take a look at this. Oh, boy, do you see a really big cup and handle going on here? We've got that inverse head and shoulders on this cup and handle, and that cup and handle is the handle of a 44-year cup and handle. I don't know of anybody that's ever uh, noticed this or seen this, but this isn't proje projecting a move from 50 up to just $100. This is projecting some sort of major move. So, for fun, let's com compute what the silver price would be if it went into the same type of bubble relative to the growth factor in cur the currency supply and other assets since 1980. And if you just take all of these, add them together, and divide it by the number of different items that we are uh, measuring here, you end up with an average of $921 per ounce. Obviously, correlations like these are never perfect, and the estimates are all over the map from $200 to $2,178 per ounce. Now, I'm not saying we'll see quadruple digit silver, but I do believe triple digits are baked in the cake, and now I believe it's mid to high triple digits based on all of this technical analysis. Hi. You know, when I was young, there was a song by the group America, and I think that they were talking about silver investors because it goes like this. This is for all the lonely people. And I think they were talking about silver investors there, thinking that life has passed them by. I have been waiting for more than 20 years for silver to break its all-time high of 5250, and it looks like that is in the cards. I want you to stick around because you're going to see why. But I started investing in silver back in 2003. Uh, the spot price was around $4.30. So I have done well, but I've been expecting triple digit. You've heard me say this before, triple digit silver. The 1980 high was 50 bucks. There's nothing else in all of society that hasn't exceeded its uh, 1980 price. Uh, so the silver investors thinking that life has passed them by, don't give up until you drink from the silver cup and ride that highway in the sky. Now, that last line could have some negative con connotations, including death, riding the highway in the sky. However, it might be just riding high. And I'm not ju just talking about like riding high, riding a tall horse. I'm talking about flying high. I'm talking about high altitude jets. And that is probably where silver is taking us. And I'm going to show you the, ev the evidence. But first, I have to digress and show you a little bit of a presentation that I've made before again. This is the gold price from 1999 until late in 2003. And it had put in this triple top. And when it bounced off of the triple top, you know, triple tops are normally very negative. Uh, a stock goes up and it, it makes a, a top and does a pullback and it makes a double top and it can't get through. It pulls back again. If it gets repelled a third time and goes down, uh, you know, that's really strong resistance. It can't break it. It's, it's usually bad news. However, this was for a, the price of a commodity, which is limited in supply, a commodity that is also money which is limited in supply, compared to debt-based national fiat currencies. It's priced in those debt-based national, national fiat currencies, which are unlimited in supply, and always have, they always have to expand the currency supply to keep the game going, or the whole thing implodes in a deflationary collapse. We must have an expanding currency supply. It's just the way the system works. And the larger and larger currency supply, chasing after the same amount of goods and services roughly, means a falling currency value, so prices go up. And we're measuring a commodity with a fiat currency. I was absolutely certain that this was going to go up. But when it did this, there were some patterns here that I started pointing out to people. The pan and handle or cup and handle, it's called, it's, called, it's either one. Uh, that had persisted for quite a long time. This goes back to 2013, the formation of that cup and handle, pan and handle. The triple top, which in this case is a positive because when it breaks that triple top, it means it's going to be a powerful move. And then I said when it started that pullback, you watch, this is going to make 
an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And that will lead to a slingshot move. You know, once it breaks that triple top, there will be a slingshot move. And I said that slingshot move over and over again uh, for the past year or more. Uh, and so that, there's what happened. And there is the slingshot move. And all of that happened in just a few trading days. Of, you know, it was less than two weeks that that big slingshot happened. And so pan and handle, uh, triple top, inverse head and shoulders. And when it broke the triple top, we had the slingshot move. However, I was slightly wrong. Look at the, I, I copied and pasted this from the uh, chart that I had made uh, back in 2023. Uh, and the angle of that move was wrong. It was a lot more powerful move, a lot faster than that. And so I want to show you, though, the background against which all of these price rises were happening. Uh, we had this the price rise, but there was this big divergence. So the top portion of this chart, this is uh, COMEX gold. So this is COMEX trading, uh, the commodities exchange. This is where most of the manipulation takes place, and this is where the gold price is set by the paper contracts that are being traded that are promises to pay gold, but they're not necessarily gold. And so you got this big price increase with a divergence of fewer and fewer contracts. And, and this is pretty large. You're talking about 800,000 and uh, 520,000. Let me see. Um, 513, 514,000. I'm going to round. Uh, so that is a big decline from the peak. Yet the price rose during that time. And then the volume of how many contracts. So this is how many. This is the open interest how many contracts are out there at any given moment. This is how many are being opened and closed and opened and closed, all of the trading that's going on. And it had a substantial decline as well. But, you know, if you look back at this, uh, the peak back in 2011 to 2015, uh, you see a peak in open interest and a decline and a peak in trading volume and a decline. And so these things were cor positively correlated. Now we've got this negative divergence. Let's take a look at the transparent gold holdings. So this is published repositories, all of the big vaults and mutual funds and ETFs. It's a number of ounces. This is all put together by Nick Laird of Gold Charts R Us. Thank you, Nick. And uh, you know, again, you see this huge divergence from uh, this, this happened in late 2022, uh, where the price stopped reflecting the quantity that was being bought and sold by people. And on the bottom, you've got the weekly change measured in ounces. And you can see the overwhelming sales that were happening. And with these sales, the price was declining, which it should. But then with all of these sales, the price started rising, especially here in just these few weeks. And we're talking about, well, let's go over to the same chart, but with uh, the, this is measured in dollars uh, of inflow and outflow instead of ounces. And you're talking, you know, this, this is almost a quarter billion dollars last week. The week before was about 1.1 billion, then a quarter billion and, you know, 800 million. But on the average, I mean, look at this. This was all sales, which should push the, push the price down, but the price rose instead. Why? Who is doing this buying? Well, we've said it before. It's, it's you know, the, it isn't the West that is buying. The West is dishoarding precious metals. It's the East that's doing the buying. Uh, this sort of sums it up. So this is all of the published re repositories, and you can see this correlation. When the price rises, uh, the number of ounces in the repositories goes up because people are buying and storing. And then the price fell and the number of ounces went down. The price uh, rose and the number of ounces went up. But then the big divergence happened. The price rose and went up to, uh, it was actually uh, $2,448.80 was the uh, the um, peak here. So it, the, this chart doesn't reflect that. And then this shows you the total amount in all of those different vaults. So take a look at, at the number 
I mean, Nick Laird really does, uh, uh, this is a, an heroic task to uh, collect all of this data and summarize it uh, uh, every week and, and plot this thing. Now, I wish that he had put the COMEX, this blue one, at, uh, as the top line. And the reason is most of these lines uh, wouldn't be showing. The, this is where the manipulation takes place, is on the COMEX. And it wouldn't be showing this enormous increase. Yeah, uh, you know, where they are today, there are periods of time where like this green line here is thicker than it is back here or back here. So it does expand and contract. But there's only one thing where there is this obvious manipulation that goes on, and that is over at the COMEX. But look at the decline. We're talking about 160 all the way down to about uh, 112, 113 ounces. That is a, an enormous decline. And so the West suppresses gold. So the central banks that are trying to manage gold price and stuff, we suppress gold, the bullion banks, Meanwhile, what is driving the price? Why was the price going up during this big divergence? It's because we're suppressing the price and the Chinese are buying. They've been accumulating the whole time that the price has been manipulated to the downside in the West and they are buying up the precious metals and that is most likely the reason for the divergence. Now, there was an article recently by a guy named John Forrest Little. China switches strategy from stacking gold to taking all the silver. And now this article may or may not be correct because it's based on something, I, I call it hearsay, but uh, it's, it's, this is his source basically. My wife is in China. She speaks and reads fluent Mandarin. She told me last night that Ch the Chinese media is writing articles and recommending silver as a better investment as gold gets more expensive. So that's basically the only source that he cited for this theory. But let's take a look at some of the uh, facts that he lists here because this is good. Uh, there are 1,425,000,000 people in China. That's more than three times the United States. Uh, just starting this week, the Chinese government is advertising and telling its loyal people to buy silver instead of gold. Uh, there are three. There are Their orders in the past year were to stack gold, as we, we reported back in 2023. Silver and gold stacking are the cornerstone of their crafted and clever strategy of economic warfare. And so, you know, the People's Bank of China, China has been accumulating a massive amount of gold and it is their their reports very often they <clears throat> they hide the truth <laughs> i'm not going to say they lie they just don't tell you what's going on they hide the truth so let's take a look at silver where is silver at what is silver doing and what are the technical indi indicators i went over some of this in my insiders report uh, when i did that original gold chart back in 2023 uh, I couldn't find that presentation, so I didn't, I'm not showing it to you now. But, you know, you can see, I'm zooming up on the handle. Let me go back for just a second. You can see there's a pan and handle here, right? Everybody can see that. Big old pan and handle going back to 2013 or so. You could even draw it from here, a uh, very tilted pan and handle. Uh, zooming up on the handle. This is an intraday can, uh, candlestick chart. So it's showing the inter intraday price maximums. And we had um, about uh, 29.80 here and about $30.10 here and 29.90 here. Now, in order to be considered a double or a triple top, it's supposed to be within 3% of each other, but I think this is like 0.3% of each other. This is really a triple top. And so that, we've got a triple top existing on silver. Hmm, do you see an inverse head and shoulders that formed here? Hmm, let's take a look. Now, I apologize for the resolution in this chart, but there is a method to my madness. You'll see it in a minute. Uh, this is a line chart, which does not include the intraday pricing. It's based on the close. So this one, and I forgot to turn off the labels before I had put a whole bunch of work into this and didn't want to want to do it over uh, but instead of 20 
990. Uh, it's saying 2833. Uh, but there is there is a triple top here. This is actually up here. Um, so there is a cup and handle. You should be able to see that. There is a triple top and there is a double a, a an inverse head and shoulders that has formed. And when it breaks this head and shoulders, we're going to have another slingshot move. And I, I keep on saying that slingshot move. I mean, I've said that since last year, and it's all it already happened with gold. It sort of has happened if sil with silver, if you're looking at like the past year's trading range. We've had some very good, it, it's performed better than gold. But we still have yet to see this. This is the exciting part, is that this is still to come. Now, we are going to see some uh, resistance. And so it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to go up to like between 30 and 37. And somewhere in there, it'll do a jog and a pullback. And then it'll continue this climb, most likely. Technical, I, I give no advice. Uh, all I do is I report on what I see, and I take my own action on what I see. Uh, but uh, technical charting is like right 60% of the time and wrong 40% of the time. So it may not do what I'm expecting, except what I expected with gold played out. You know, sometimes you get lucky and things just go right. Uh, and that is exactly what happened with my predictions and gold. So I'm grateful for that. But let's take a look at the long view. This, this high here was 2011. Let's go all the way back to 1975 and take a look at this. Oh, boy, do you see a really big cup and handle going on here? Let's uh, uh, make, give it some extra headroom here so that we can uh, make some. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a big old uh, cup of steaming hot caffeine that should accelerate this move because it's going to be all hyperactive coming up. We've got that inverse head and shoulders on this cup and handle, and that cup and handle is the handle of a 44-year cup and handle. I don't know of anybody that's ever uh, noticed this or seen this, but this isn't proje projecting a move from 50 up to just $100. This is projecting some sort of major move where $200 should be like an extremely... Con I, I, I don't know the projection that a cup and handle gives like this on the average, but we're probably talking something above 250, but you know, most likely below 1,000. I don't think uh, quadruple digit silver is in the cards. But um, if you, I mean, you've got to be able to see that cup and handle. Excuse my crude art, it's difficult to draw with a trackpad when you're in a hurry. So there is the cup and handle again. Here's another picture of cup and handle. And I want to read to you from my book, The Great Gold and Silver Rush of the 21st Century. And you can go to ggsr21.com and uh, get some of the free chapters there. And so for fun, let's com compute what the silver price would be if it went into the same type of bubble relative to the growth factor in cur the currency supply and other assets since 1980. The numbers below show where silver would be relative to its 1980 peak with the price derived simply by multiplying the 1980 $52.50 high, that's what it was in the intraday high on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, by the percentage rise of these other categories uh, since then, to their most recent peaks in this decade. So the consumer price index, and you got to remember, you know, the book came out uh, more than a year ago. This chapter was probably written about two years ago. So a lot of these estimates are going to be on the low side now, <laughs> but adjusted for the CPI, the 1980 high, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which has no labor. It's not the it's, it's the, not the BLS, it's the BS, uh, is $200. Bec and you can see that this is a lie based on all these other categories. A median price home, the percentage it has risen since January of 1980, would put silver at $468 an ounce. The Wilshire 5000 stock index, which only has about 3,500 companies in it now because there aren't 
5,000 publicly listed companies. And so this is the entire stock market. If you measure the stock market's growth since January 1980 and apply the same percentage to silver, you have $2,178 per ounce. 10-year treasury bonds, $1,059. The U.S. GDP, so the, pri the, the uh, percentage growth of all of the goods and services bought and sold in America, many of which use silver in them, uh, um, the year-over-year -year change, that growth since uh, January 1980, $468. The currency in circulation, so the paper Federal Reserve notes, uh, if, if it grew as much as that, you'd be talking about $971 per ounce silver. The M2 currency supply, which includes uh, bank, bank credit, the M2 currency supply, which includes bank credit, is $781 per ounce silver prediction. And MZM, which was the Fed discontinued in February of 2021, they hid it from us. It, it wasn't, it, it's part of um, other calculations. So them stop, not publishing this is actually hiding it from us. But $1,250 an ounce. And if you just take all of these, add them together and divide it by the number of different items that we are uh, measuring here, you end up with an average of $921 per ounce. Now we could include a bunch of other things in society. We could find a few things to, you know, I didn't include any other commodities in this. Commodities, oil though, look at it. Oil was uh, uh, back in uh, 1990, late 90s, early 2000s, it was 10 bucks, uh, and now it's 80 something. So um, if we included some other things in here, we might be able to pull this down. But other items would push it up. Uh, what is the average? Add everything in society together and then average it and, uh, and you'll have it. So obviously correlations like these are never perfect and the estimates are all over the map from $200 to $2,178 per ounce. Now I'm not saying we'll see quadruple digit silver, but I do believe Triple digits are baked in the cake, and now I believe it's mid to high triple digits based on all of this technical analysis. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.